What puts a lot of people off doing a GED or any other math test is the fact that they have a few issues with their multiplication tables. They might not know all of their multiplication tables. So uh, they're a little bit leery about having to write the test. What if you could take your multiplication tables in with you? Well, you can't. They won't let you do that. Uh, but what if you could write out your multiplication tables after you've started? Now, if it takes you 5, 10, 15 minutes to write out your multiplication tables, it's not a good use of your time. However, there is a way that you can write out your multiplication tables in under two minutes, under a minute and a half if you try even harder. And uh, once you've got your multiplication tables, you can do lots of things with it. Of course, you can do multiplication. Suppose you want to do five times six. Well, you find a five, you find a six, join them up, and you get 30. So there's your multiplication. You can do division. Suppose you want to do 42 divided by 6. You find your 6 line, motor down to hit 42, move across to the side, and you get your answer is 7. 42 divided by 6 is 7. You can do square roots and your exponents. That's this diagonal line that starts here at 1 and moves right across to 100. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, the root of 16 is 4. We can even put fractions in lowest terms. Suppose you've got 3 over 9 and you want to put that in lowest terms. Find a 3, find a 9, move across to this side, your answer is 1 out of 3. If you can write it out very quickly and accurately, it's worth its weight in gold when you're writing a math test or math exam. And I'm going to show you the method that I use uh, so that you can write it out very quickly and accurately in under 2 minutes, maybe even under a minute and a half, and maybe even under a minute. The traditional approach just starts at the top line and you do your ones across the top. Then you calculate your twos, calculate your threes, calculate your fours. Then it starts to slow down because it's getting harder. Fives are okay, but then you're adding sixes on, sevens, eights, and nines, and it becomes more difficult when you do a traditional line by line approach. I will show you my patented Math Doctor method that has a certain way that we do it, a certain order that we do it in, and that takes away a lot of the double calculations that you do with the traditional method and speeds it right up because this is all about speed. This is about getting a 10 by 10 grid done in under two minutes so that you can use the rest of the time on the test to your advantage. And we have a special guest here from the uh, Owen Sound Adult Learning Center, and Sue Gould, and Sue actually knows the method. She knows the secret method. But what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that she doesn't know the method, and she's going to do the traditional approach, which is across the top, line by line. At the same time, I'm going to work over here in this grid, and I'm going to use my uh, Math Arker method, and then we'll compare the two. We'll see how fast we can uh, both get the grid filled in. I will compare the two, and then I'm going to break it down uh, step by step as to how I did the math doctor method. Okay, so are you ready? I'm ready. I just want everyone to know again that Sue <laughs> knows the method and she is uh, really good at it, but we're just going to show the traditional method. We're not trying to put her on the spot here, okay? <laughs> are we ready? Are we set? Alright, so I've completed my grid in record time, I hope, and if you have a look at it, you'll notice it looks like chicken scratch, it looks like a bunch of Canada geese have walked through some sand, but that's not the point. The point is, I can use it, and I've written it quickly, and I've written it accurately. Uh, Sue managed to get down to uh, this line here, and what would happen doing the traditional line by line method is calculations would come more slowly because you're starting to add on sevens, eights, and nines, uh, and it would slow down even more. That's not to say you can't do a grid using the traditional method, but it just takes a lot more time. And have you got that amount of time when you're doing an exam? So, I'm going to go through this step by step how we should uh, uh, do the Math Doctor Grid. And the first one is to start with an idea. And the idea is, what goes across must go down. 
We're rewriting the laws of physics. The laws of physics say what goes up must come down. The laws of the math grid say whatever you do across goes down, or whatever you do down goes across. So we're going to start with our ones. And you'll notice even when I write very slowly, my handwriting still looks like chicken scratch. So the speed thing isn't really an excuse, okay? Now, what goes across? Let's come down. Think of it as we're building a house. So we've got the roof and one wall done. Now we have to build the other wall and the floor. Now the other wall is going to be the tens. Tens are easy to do. Now, I ask people and I say, what is the absolute hardest multiplication table to do? And most people will say it's the nines. And the nines are actually the easiest ones to do. We're going to use a little trick here that's just counting backwards from nine. I want you to think that we've got the house built, we've got the frame of the house, we've got the roof and the floor and we've got two walls. Now we're going to have a little celebration. So what we're going to do is we're going to send up some fireworks. And of course we need a countdown. And the countdown is with the nines. Here we go. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then back up. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then rather than recalculate all those numbers, we just copy them. After the nine, there's an 18. I just copy. Let's put some windows in. Windows are going to be the fives. couple reasons we do the fives next. One, because they're easy to do. And two, they act as a spacer. Have we done anything hard yet? No. And we're not going to do anything hard. What we're going to do next is the rest of the multiplication tables in order. So we're going to do two, three, four. And again, what goes across must go down. And look, we've only got nine boxes left to do, and that's the six, seven, and eights. And we haven't really done anything difficult yet, and we're not going to do anything difficult. We're going to do the sixes next. 30 and 6 is 36. We know that 6 and 6 is 12, so the next one has to be 42. And then we're adding 6 on to 42, which is 48. Then I'm going to put these two in these two boxes here. I don't have to recalculate them again, because I've calculated them once. So now I just have to copy them into these two boxes. Look, I'm down to four boxes now, and I haven't done anything difficult yet. Uh, and we're not going to do anything difficult, because what we're going to now do is remember uh, the last four numbers. Most people can remember four numbers. Uh, you can remember birthdays, uh, telephone numbers, and these numbers are easy to remember because two of them are the same. All right. 49 is an easy one to remember. We think about the lottery. We're going to win the lottery with my system here, and it's 649. Easy one to remember. The next two are the same, 56 and 56. Some people talk about classic cars. They talk about a 56 Chevy or something like that. That's how they remember it. And the last number is 64. Again, you have to come up with something for yourself to remind you what 64 is. I like to think 6 plus 4 is 10. Uh, you might think of a year someone was born in, 1964 or something, or somebody you know is 64. And there we have it. We're done. Uh, so here's how we can use the grid. We've got an 8 times 7. All we have to do is find an 8 on the outside, or on the top row. Find a 7 on the first row, join them up, and we'll end up with 56. And the beauty of this is we could have found 8 out here and a 7 here, join the two up, and guess what, we get 56. So it doesn't really matter. 56 is our answer. When we're using the chart for division, 48 divided by 6, what we want to do is find the 6 times table, because we're dividing by 6. We find the 6, we motor down until we find 48, and then we turn, and we'll come out, and we'll find 8. We can use this grid for putting some fractions into lowest terms, 28 over 35. So we're going to find a 28, and we're going to find a 35. So there's a 28, and there's a 35. And we're going to motor straight across, and we'll find 4 over 5. 
where four fifths is the lowest terms. It works with some fractions. We can do any square numbers on here as well, up to 10, because these are our square numbers. They make a nice diagonal from one corner to another. Six squared, you can do it one of two ways. You can just count six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and your answer will be 36. Or six squared is just six times six, so we'd find a six. A six, join them up, and we'll find 36. And we can also do some of the basic square roots. Square root of 49, we would find 49 with the circle on it move out to either the top or move out to the side and our answer is 7. We can use the grid to use multiplication, division, some fractions in lowest terms and some of the basic squares and square roots uh, from 1 up to 100.